Investigators are seeking the public's help this morning after three homeless people have been shot to death on the streets of Atlanta over the last two weeks. Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms held a press conference on yesterday suggesting that the three deaths may be related. With just nine days left in the legislative session, the pressure is on for lawmakers to pass a new hate crime bill as well as propose a new budget. Legislators say it won't be easy, but they'll get it done. The Georgia Department of Labor is calling the surge of unemployment claims unprecedented and worse than the Great Recession. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, an estimated 239,000 Georgians lost their job between April and May. Police and a group of search volunteers have been scouring this field behind me, looking for any clues in the disappearance of a five-year-old boy who wandered away from his home earlier today. Local funeral homes are having to make tough decisions. Funeral directors are having to balance honoring the deceased while protecting the living, while families have to decide which 10 family members can attend services and say their final goodbyes. The coronavirus is changing the way families celebrate and honor the life of their loved ones. Many funeral homes like Divine Mortuary have turned to technology to offer families additional options. Owners Joseph McDonald III, along with his wife Regina, say their main goal is to keep everyone safe and give service beyond expectations. Well, most families have been listening to the importance of safety and what needs to take place in order to remain safe. Uh, you do have some that really wants to spend time with their families, and this is the last time that they have an opportunity to do that. So what we do, we will let them come in and they'll view prior to, and then the 10 that they decide will see the service, they will stay in, and the others will look at the, uh, will attend the funeral service by live stream, usually on their phones and in their cars. On the entrance doors, that you must wear a mask. We have sanitizer throughout the chapel. We have attendants on the outside monitoring the families as they come in and out to make sure that they don't exceed the uh, social, distance, social distancing uh, guidelines. While funeral homes continue to adjust their coronavirus protocols, they stay committed to serving the community during their time of grief. In Lithonia, Georgia, I'm Donnie Tucker. A group of dedicated volunteers started their day with a word of prayer before spending the morning putting together more than 1,000 of what they like to call love bags packed with food and hygiene products for the less fortunate. Erica Wright, the founder of Project You First, says it's her mission to give dignity back to the homeless one love bag at a time. I do this because I believe that God has given everyone a purpose and a mission in their life. Last year we did over 85,000 hygiene kits. We traveled from Atlanta to California. We stopped in every state along the way. We went under the bridges. We talked to our homeless community. We talked to CEOs. We wanted to find out what they were doing in their city. The love bags filled with items we often take for granted, like soap, toothpaste, a toothbrush, lotion, and we can't forget about a peanut butter and jelly sandwich made with love. For Erica and many other volunteers, it's as simple as giving a helping hand to those who need it the most. It's, it's, it's something to see um, when you see people that are uh, in certain situations and we've been helping feed the homeless, clothe the homeless, and just giving them hygiene bags and just the basic necessities to be able to um, help them out, you know, on the streets of Atlanta, and I think that that's very, very important um, to be able to give back to the community. Project You First will be delivering the sack lunches and love bags to 12 shelters across Atlanta. For more information on how you can donate or volunteer, you can visit projectyoufirst.com. Reporting from Atlanta, I'm Donnie Tuggle. Chance of no justice, no peace. Filled the streets as dozens of demonstrators of all ages and backgrounds showed up along Piedmont and Sandy Plains Road to voice their frustrations with police brutality. Candidate for House District 44 and protest organizer Connie DeSico says the community is hungry for healing and transformation. Um, and I think a big part of this is about showing people of color that they are supported uh, and how their community feels about them in a very positive, very real way. Protesters say this rally is just the first step of many on the road to change. So, like, this is great. This is just one step, right? 
and now you have two years. But the next thing is write your local representative, write your senator, vote in the election. We have a primary coming up in less than a week. So hopefully the outcome is definitely changed. We need everybody out here to make it stand for change. Demonstrators say to overcome, we must first understand. Our community is a lot of different voices. And I think it's time that people start seeing that in terms of representation, but also in how they think of our community as well. I'm a mother of three boys, and I don't want my boys to live in fear. Demonstrators say the message is simple. They want justice, equality, and people to know that black lives do matter. These are our people, and they needed her. Reporting from Marietta, Georgia, I'm Donnie Tuggle.